guys, my name is Luaz the Spool. Welcome back again to another video by me for you guys. And it's good to see your smiling faces. I like that. I like that, man. I like that. I know someone is smiling while watching this video because they are so happy that I'm learning more about Islam. They are so happy that I'm opening myself to the Muslim and the Islam family and generation, you know, like... This is a time to be open-minded and see everything that you can see. Study. Know things, you know. Make up your own conclusion, your own decisions, do your own research. And with that being said, guys, it's good to see you back. For those who are new, welcome to Edis TV. This is where we make nice reactions, I believe. And please stay until the end of the video because I've got a very special message for you guys. Thank you very much. Let's get to it guys, Ahmed Ditat at his best, another one guys, another amazing video. I haven't seen the video but I know deep down that Ahmed will always deliver. Let's get to it guys. Spelled out in English, Latin, I-Z-H-A-R-U-L-H-A-K is Harul Haq, sounds like Muslim, is Harul Haq, I said sounds like Muslim, but what is this Harul Haq, I don't know. At the bottom in brackets in smaller types is written the truth revealed. So I said, ah, maybe this word is Harul Haq means the truth revealed. So I sit down on the ground in the dust and I start reading. I've got no time to waste. There, there, I'm hungry, I want to read. What is it all about? So I read, started reading this book there on the ground in the dust. That this book was written by Arab, Rahmatullah Hindi to help the Indian Muslims to give battle to the Nasara, the Christians. It speaks about the British conquest of India. Mm. As the British came and conquered your country, conquered Ghana, conquered Nigeria, they conquered India, they conquered Malaysia. When they conquered my country, India, they realized that at any time anybody will give them trouble, in India will be the Muslims. Because power, wow. rule, dominion was wrenched out of their hand. And once you have tasted power, you aspire for it once more. So the problem is the Muslim. If you can convert the Muslim, if you can teach him to turn the other cheek, like Jesus said, he will strike you on the right cheek, give him the other. Once you make the Muslim to do that, then you can rule India for a thousand years. Wow. So convert the Muslim. So they started pouring in the missionaries like frogs in the rainy season. Christian missionaries, they started coming into India. And they started challenging the Muslims to public debates. Munazira. At first, the Muslims were reluctant. Number one, they didn't know the language. The British are speaking English, I want to talk to you and debate with you in English. He said, I don't know English. Our Alims didn't know English. Number two, they just conquered us. And if you speak too hard, too harsh, they might send us to the Andaman Islands, black waters like the Robben Island in South Africa, Ooh. out of the way. Shh, you want to take a chance? So the Muslims were not cooperating. They didn't want to debate. Number one, language problem. Number two, fear. So the Christian missionaries, they mastered our language, Urdu. The language of the elite, the Alims. And they started challenging us to debate with you in your language. Like our alim might say, look, we only, know, we only know Swahili. So the guy learns Swahili. He said, your alim, bring him in Swahili. We want to debate with him. Can you say no? In your language. So the Muslims were forced to accept. And Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, he accepted the challenge. He was forced to accept the challenge. And the debate takes place. And this is I'm interesting. Told in the book, that 100,000 people gathered. There was no sound system, no horns, nothing. How the voice traveled, Allah knows best. But people were there watching on far and they say, well, what's going on? Somebody is giving a commentary. You say, you know, the Maulana gave one uppercut like that. And this guy said, commentaries are going on. No sound system. There was no sound system those days. So debates. With the reverend, the reverend founder by name, the reverend founder, the Britisher, he suggested to the Maulana that Maulana Sahib, respected Maulana, Ali, gets started. So the Maulana says, you see, Christianity preceded Islam by 600 years. As such, you have an elder brother. You are 600 years older than us. And according to our culture, our elder brother has the first chance. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, you see, you are our guest. You are a guest in our country, not an unwelcome guest. 
but still you are a guest. So according to our culture, you have the first preference. Wow. So the reverend was forced to start. And he started with a question, with a poser, with a riddle. Said so Maulana Sahib in Urdu, speaking Urdu. Maulana Sahib respected Alim, Maulana. Where is your Prophet Muhammad now, now, this minute? Where is he now? So the Maulana for a moment, and he said, he is in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right. If your Prophet was with this Allah, where was he when his grandson Hussein was murdered at Karbala? When Yazid chopped off his head, where was your Prophet Muhammad then? So the Maulana again thought for a moment and he said he was still in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the third question. It was planned strategy. Mm. He said, all right, all right. If your Muhammad was with his Allah, the grandson Hussein was martyred, killed, slaughtered at Karbala, did he not ask his Allah for help? Say, Ya Baritala, oh my Lord, look what they're doing to my grandson. Please help him out of this difficulty. Didn't he ask his Allah for help? And there was a long pause. And the, the, the priest couldn't hold his patience. He started stamping his feet. He said, come on, come on. Did he not ask his Allah for help? It's natural, natural. You say, I have a big brother. Somebody's bullying you. Brother, look, man, look at this guy here. What is he doing to me? You naturally, you call for help. And your Allah is there, the Almighty, the All-Powerful. And you're not going to ask him for help? He says, come on, come on. Did he or didn't he ask his Allah for help? Interesting. So the Maulana... What did he say? Jesus, he did. He did ask Allah for help. Then what did I say? Because we know he wasn't saved. What did Allah say? And there was an inordinate, very long pause. And the priest again lost his spirit, started stamping his... Come on, come on. What did Allah say? Sounds like a white crazy man. Yeah. So the Maulana starts. This is Allah crying. Allah cried. So what? Allah cried? He said, yes, Allah cried. He said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? <laughs> what a comeback. What a comeback. I like that. And the debate was over. The debate was over. You I see, like that. Debate had nothing with facts. Facts. It was a matching of the wits. Cleverness. Who is the cleverer of the two wins the battle? And Alhamdulillah, the Maulana won the battle. But this was the old-fashioned way of trying to be argumentative, debating, making a fool of you, making a mockery of you, making a mockery of Islam. But the Christians have advanced a lot since then. They learned that the, by this method, they can't get converts. You're creating enemies, no converts. Mm, 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 mm. That is a video. I like that video. That is what... Oh, I can go on for hours watching that. Watching his talks. That is a nice funny video. That's... Oh, man. Ahmed. Wow. That is... That is too good, man. Oh, this is so much. For my head and even for my thinking. I like how the debate went. It was a very nice straight to the point debate. You see, another point that I see that you should take your time to think of an answer. You know, think of an answer because most of the time people will argue with you and want to have a debate and even insult you to prove that they are right. They are willing to demean you as a human just to prove that they are correct or to pass their statement you know but that was a beautiful one man as I said guys if you came this far I have a message for you guys the message is thank you for watching I love you guys very much thank you for supporting the channel I've been doing my best to keep on posting videos as a student I'm, I've got school and I've got the channels running I've got you know everything going on but you know man I always ask for strength from God, from Allah, you know, I always ask for strength just to keep me, keep me going. Please, Lord, keep me going. 
So thank you for watching guys. Subscribe down below man and thank you for suggesting new videos for me to watch. I'll see you guys next time. Keep smiling. Peace. Thank you for watching guys and please check out my new video and please subscribe down below and by subscribing to this channel, my channel, our channel, you are helping the channel grow. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.